This week we caught up with a couple of guests who came to town for Adelaide's anime and video game festival, Avcon. Chris Pope, the Space Pope, is a US game developer currently hard at work on nostalgic point and clicker Space Venture. And while you might not recognise Steve Down's face, you'll certainly know his voice as we chat to the man behind Master Chief. This is Player Attack. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen, and this week Pokemon Go is back in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. To celebrate the game's first anniversary, Niantic announced Pokemon Go Fest, an all-day ticketed event that would feature increased encounters, extra challenges and rewards, and an exclusive in-app medal. Those trainers who couldn't make it to Chicago had to make do with special in-game events and some nifty reward multiplayers, but don't feel too bad if you couldn't make it. The event quickly sold out and an estimated 20,000 people crammed into Chicago's Grant Park over the weekend, excited for a couple of days of catching them all and racking up some precious XP. Unfortunately, neither of those things happened for many people, even once they braved the three hour long wait in line to get in and actually play the game. Technical glitches hit and they hit hard. The region's mobile networks were quickly overloaded and simply refused to connect users and Niantic's own servers crashed just a few hours into the event. By way of apology, the developer is refunding all of the sold tickets and giving all attendees $100 worth of in-game coins as well as a legendary Lugia. In happier news, Australia has qualified for the Overwatch World Cup at BlizzCon after an impressive group final stage held in Sydney over the weekend. The team entered the competition looking comfortable with early wins against Italy and Portugal before succumbing to Sweden on Sunday morning. The Aussies then faced off against fan favourites Japan in the final matchup of the weekend. The game was intense, with neither team prepared to give too much of an advantage before this move from Australia secured a trip to the grand finals in November, setting up a 3 2 victory for the home team. Australia with the alt advantage right now. It's their game to win. Oh no! The pick! Oh my god! AKTM taken out by Juwan. Once again, a crucial pick with that razor. In quick news, there has been a bit of musical chairs going on over at BioWare with the news that Aaron Flynn will be stepping down from his general manager position. Flynn has been with the company for nearly two decades, working in a number of positions, including lead programmer and chief technical officer. He was also named as the original director for upcoming Mass Effect title Anthem, but he's now announced he's taking a bit of time off. Stepping up into the GM role now is a familiar face. Corey Hudson, former Bioware executive producer, who is returning home after taking three years of its own time off. Iconic RPG RuneScape is getting a new lease of life 16 years after the original game hit shelves. Soon you'll be able to log in and play the groundbreaking MMO anywhere you like, with Jagex confirming a mobile client is coming soon. It is exactly the same game you know and love, with some interfaces tweaked and optimised for the smaller screen, and yes, there will be persistent cross-platform play with the desktop version. And while we're looking at things being dragged, kicking and screaming into the future, Blizzard has announced it is ending support for Windows XP and Windows Vista starting in October. Please remember that Microsoft themselves ceased support for the operating systems in 2009 and 2012 respectively, but it seems a decent chunk of Blizzard fans still use their older machines to play World of Warcraft, Starcraft 2, Diablo 3, Hearthstone and Heroes of the Storm. Now though, in 2017, enough is enough. If you're still running an old version of Windows, maybe now's a good time to Last month, a massive landslide hit California's Big Sur, effectively adding 13 acres to the region's coastline. Nobody was injured when more than a million tonnes of rock and debris collapsed after unusually heavy rainfall, but a lot of that dirt landed directly on top of Highway 1, the Pacific Coast Highway. But how is this related to gaming? Well, the team behind American Truck Simulator pride themselves in making their game as real-world accurate as possible. And it turns out the Pacific Coast Highway is included in American Truck Simulator, so now it too is buried under virtual rubble, complete with illuminated warning signs. And for that extra bit of realism, whether or not the road is ever reopened depends entirely on real world events. We don't have many details about it at this point, but we do have some pretty pictures of the brand new Atari box. The new machine has been inspired by classic Atari elements, including that iconic wood grain, but it's been bumped into the 21st century with HDMI and USB ports as well as an SD card reader. 
More details are promised soon. The dev team reassures us that they really want to get things right, so they're taking their time. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds has crashed past another couple of milestones this week, with more than 5 million copies of the game sold in just four months. The Battle Royale, which is still in early access, also achieved the fourth highest peak player count on Steam, overtaking the juggernaut that is Grand Theft Auto V. More than 380,000 people were logged into the game at one point, a record only bested by Fallout 4, CSGO and Dota 2, which saw 1.2 million concurrent users back in March 2016. Believe it or not, it's been over a year since Bethesda unleashed the revamped Doom onto the world, and the studio is not finished with it yet. This week saw the arrival of the ominously titled 6.66 update, which brings with it a ton of fixes and improvements, mainly focusing on snap map and multiplayer. That would be enough for most people, but with a version number like that, it's got to do something special. Bethesda has also taken the opportunity to completely revamp the multiplayer progression system, add in an all new rune system to replace the hack module system, and to overhaul the user interface to better deliver information, and add in some more details that are available to you now as well. Even then, they're still not done. The Doom Season Pass has been officially retired, meaning that the three multiplayer DLC packs are now available to everyone, everywhere, free of charge. And finally this week, hang on to your trousers, this announcement has been a decade in the making. Super Fancy Pants Adventure is breaking free of its flash-based shackles and is making it onto PC for the first time. Sit tight, Pants fans, this one is due to hit Steam in August this year. For more information on any of these stories, or to keep up to date with the latest gaming news, head to playerattack.com. But for now, stick around, got plenty more still to come.